Hey, hey, friends of revolutionaries. Diving into that uh, stack of NECA figures I talked about earlier to try and kind of work through the month of October, we're going to take a look at one of the last two Resident Evil Archive figures I have yet to get to, and we're going to go ahead and start by taking a look at Hunk. Hunk, the fourth survivor from way back in Resident Evil 2, the fourth survivor, the, uh, the uh, uh, Umbrella Special Ops team. A really awesome dynamic to the game. A great kind of element that, uh, that I think was introduced. And I love that every time we've seen Hunk, he's always played some bit role in the background. You know, he's, he's been, he is, he's, <laughs> he's not as prominent as Wesker, but has that potential to really affect the story. And I like that. Um, there's been some talk that Hunk was going to be the unmasked Hunk, was going to be uh, going rogue against Umbrella, and showing up in Resident Evil 6 as one of the main characters. Now that game's recently come out, and if you've picked it up, and if you know, if it's him, don't tell me. <laughs> if it's not him, let me know, because I will be glad that it's not. But if it is, don't tell me, <laughs> because... Again, I like him in the background. I like having this background character where things are happening and he's the guy in the mix. Sure, Wesker might be pulling the strings or he might be one of the you know, forces at work, but Hunk is one of the guys out there making stuff happen. And, uh, and he's an unknown. He, he, he presents that unknown. Could he be an asset or an enemy uh, to the main characters? I guess it all depends on what fits his needs. And that's really great. You know, we've got this wild card in the game. Um, I hope they don't pull him out and turn him into an actual playable character and, you know, kind of destroy that whole possibility. I hope that's not what happens. But again, if you know, if it's not Hunk, please let me know. I've been worried. <laughs> I've been worried. Uh, taking a look at the packaging, this is the old Resident Evil Archive packaging. You know, not quite the same as the original release. This is Series 3, apparently. I don't know what happened to Series 2. <laughs> but uh, there we go. Got the great Capcom logo. Resident Evil Archives. And there we've got a picture of Hunk on the back. So cool. <laughs> so very cool. It is from the NECA Player Select line. And it says, Team Leader of a Private Special Forces Unit under direct control of Umbrella Executives Hunk is a professional warrior with extensive military training. And a knack for being the only survivor. <laughs> I mean, it's something where whenever Hunk gets assigned to a team, I can imagine there's a collective groan among all the other team members going, Great. <laughs> We're getting that guy. Um, cool packaging. Got that great kind of Resident Evil silhouette up at the top. Very much like Night of the Living Dead. A Kind of a... A very, uh, a very traditional Resident Evil kind of look. You know, that, this, this image here, we don't see this anymore. That lone house, that, uh, that, that soul survivor kind of thing. Yeah, that's not what Res Resident Evil's about anymore. For good or for bad, it is different. But it is cool to see here. Nice big window with Hunk on the front, or in it, with his accessories. Got a bit of a, I don't know what the background is. <laughs> I think it's just kind of a worn, kind of a, how should we say, a, a distressed background. Almost like there's the wallpaper from the mansion on the side here, maybe. But it's kind of cool with a black and white, kind of giving you that old Night of the Living Dead theme. On the side are the other figures, Chris, which I still don't have, the liquor, the zombies, Jill, the lab coat zombie, the hunter, Hunk, Crimson Head, and Tyrant. I think of all of them, the liquor and Chris are the ones that I want again. I think, I think those are some of the coolest. Jill is very cool, and so is the Hunter, but, uh, but the Licker is actually really awesome, too. Who knows? Maybe Hunk will be better. We'll find out. But, um, yeah, let's go ahead and pop the, uh, the Lone Survivor, uh, the Death Will Not Die, and have some fun. Be right back. Okay. <laughs> I want to say here and now, the gas masks make good monsters. They really do. I mean, it's what made Harry Wharton from My Bloody Valentine so kind of creepy. Uh, the, uh, the, in Silent Hill, the miners, they wore their gas masks. You know, even in, uh, even in the Doctor Dances, the Empty Child and Doctor Dances, 
You know, the kid has the gas mask on. Gas masks can be scary. <laughs> they can certainly be scary. And, uh, and I think that, uh, that here, yeah, I mean, going along with kind of that disturbing, you know, what's around the corner kind of thing, Hunk with his gas mask can definitely give you kind of a boo if you were to come around the corner and see that face or that mask. That is just fantastic. This is he, Hunk has been has always been one of my favorite design characters for a couple of reasons. I mean, the the gas mask, of course, and uh, and just to kind of talk about it real quick, you know, gave him the red eyes. You know, I don't know if there's some like infrared implants or 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 visor things going on with his uh, with his eyes, but they made him red. That's kind of that's kind of cool. That's kind of scary. Uh, also, I always like the fact how they kind of offset his face. And by that I mean, you can see that the gas mask is designed for two filters, but he only actually is wearing one. He only has one filter on. I always thought that was a nice touch. You know, there was kind of this, it was a little off balance. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it's, it certainly wasn't, it, it, oh, I, I can't really tell. You know what I mean. <laughs> you know, you definitely got this sense of being, whoa. Wait, wait a minute, you know, because he would be missing one of his uh, one of his filters. I don't know if it was knocked off by uh, by a tyrant by Perkin. I don't know how he lost it. I don't know if he ever actually had it, but um, I don't think so. I don't for Resident Evil Two. I don't think so. I think he only had the one the one filter. But it does a great job giving you this very unsettling face. I, I just think it's so very cool, and they painted it just fantastic this is one of those characters that that you know hunk and neca together a neca figure of hunk they complement each other so well i mean you can see all the very classic folds and ruffles and rumple uh, rumples <laughs> ruffles of uh, of the fabric that neca does so well and still kind of get the feeling of what kind of suit he's wearing. You know, what he, what does he have on? They convey it so well. It comes out just amazing. Amazing. One of the other things about the hunk design in general that I've always liked is that even though he is kind of doing the dirty business of Umbrella, he never actually has an Umbrella logo. You know, he never shows an allegiance to Umbrella specifically. And again, you know, it's one of those things where he may be doing their dirty work. You know, he may be out there retrieving the uh, the G virus for uh, for them. You know, the fact that he never wears their patch, he never has their logo on, it means that you know he's not necessarily loyal to them, only to his mission. That's that's just another part of the hunk design that I really like, and why I really like hunk like this. You know, not not overdeveloped, just this kind of mysterious wild card that could show up at any time. Just fantastic. Got his pa the, the pouch, the shoulder pockets. Of course, you can see the little clips where his vest comes together, even the pouches on his uh, chest, his belt. I mean, it's just really amazing. You see the, the Kevlar, the maybe not Kevlar, but the... Uh, well, I mean, the Kevlar on his on his back here. You know, he may be wearing that on his jacket. But he's got the straps here on his legs, the uh, knee pads, the pretty heavy military boots. Just an awesome figure all around. I particularly like also that when you look at you know, kind of close-ups here underneath. I mean, yeah, they've actually got uh, they've actually got the uh, uh, helmet straps on there. But you can see underneath, he's wearing what looks to be maybe a bio suit. You know, a second skin bio suit with the gas mask and then the helmet. And you can look underneath here, you can see a little bit better. So, you know, he is fully prepared for going into the infected environment. Yeah, I mean, it just, it just adds to that. This is guy is prepared, you know. This is no amateur. Man, I, I just... I love this figure. I love I love the figure for how it looks. Um, I am sad that uh, that it, it, that we're probably not going to see 
new versions of these older NECA characters. Uh, because with modern articulation, this would just be so much better. I mean, he's got the ball-jointed head. He's got a pin and hinge in his shoulders, which twists, comes in and out. The elbow, though, is just on a twist. There's no hinge on it. There's, there's a twist at the wrist and a twist at the waist. Again, got the hinge here on the side, but just the twist of the arms. So, you know, you can come up with some fairly decent poses, I suppose. But you can't straighten his arms out. His arms won't just hang to his side. They're permanently bent at the elbow. For display purpose, I don't mind, just because he's just going to go on display. But, uh, but considering how his, his sculpt looks, you know, that modern joint, that, that modern day elbow joint that they're using, I don't think it would have been that bad. I think it would have been blended in so well with the rest of the folds around here, around his, uh, around his elbows with the elbow pad and everything else. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we would have lost much. Plus, I think if we would have had a ball joint up here in his top torso, right where those uh, where these uh, ammo packs are, you know, instead of having the twist of the waist, we could have just had a ball joint here at the top. Would have been a great place to have it. Old style neck of legs, no articulation in the legs whatsoever. There is the twist of the boot. And he comes with a base that actually has two pegs on it. So, you know, you can peg him down. Though it's not really necessary. He stands up pretty well on his own. Now, uh, now a couple of quick drawbacks on it. I don't know what's happened here. But there, does, there definitely seems to be a piece here which seems to be popping out. I don't think it was glued in or pegged in very well. So, you know, I've got to kind of watch it. At some point, that could pop completely off. I don't know. So <laughs> it seems as though either they couldn't sculpt it on there or they realized it was a part that should have been and wasn't. So that's a little disappointing. Also, on the back, again, I don't know why this is, but his back pouch here, it's a little <laughs> his, his back bag, it's got a peg on it for him to peg it on there. And it looks exactly the way it should, but um, all the other little pouches and everything else, they're all sculpted on. Why this one in particular had to be pegged on, I don't know. <laughs> I don't quite understand. And then lastly, when you look at his leg here, he's got this working holster. He's actually got this working holster here for a gun he doesn't have. <laughs> And that is probably my biggest complaint about the film. Oh, and of course, he's got the very cool walkie-talkie on his back. You know, whenever Hunk's trying to escape, there's always that chatter in the background. And you can see where it comes from. But yeah, that's the one disappointment I have about the figure, is that it just doesn't come with as many accessories as I would have liked. You know, I think Hunk is one of the few characters that just had a slew of accessories. The dagger, the, uh, the grenades... The pistol, I mean, for what he comes with, for what he does have, I'm kind of on the fence on. Um, first off, he comes with a briefcase, which from Resident Evil 2, it wasn't even like a brief, like this nondescript briefcase. You know, it was more like one of those steel ca uh, uh, container cases that the, uh, that the, t that the G-Virus was in. You know, it wasn't one of these, uh, it wasn't one of these nondescript briefcases, though it is very cool. You know, if there had been a William Birkin figure, okay, I could see him getting this. But for Hunk to have this briefcase, you know, I, I plus, <laughs> you know, again, he, does, he doesn't have a straight arm, so, you know, it's kind of hard to have him hold it in any way that really makes sense. The, the handle is rather brittle, so I don't want to force it in there. But because his, you know, he have to bend his arm somehow <laughs> for him to carry it. And it would just look wrong. It would just look wrong. Again, if it had been the bigger kind of a, a 
supply case, transport case, you know, a, a vi virus transport case, I might have felt different. But being this nondescript briefcase, which does open, it does open, and you can see, you know, inside, there's all the appropriate things that a briefcase should have. It doesn't close real well. <laughs> But yeah, this is one of those accessories I don't think he should have had. I'd much rather would have had the pistol and the dagger. And, and I mean, with as much plastic as in this thing, yeah, I mean, he would have had... They're much, they're much better weapons that Hunk could have come with. Uh, as far as guns go, the only one he comes with is his rather uh, familiar minigun, which is actually a little bent here on the armrest or the brace. Got the clip. Actually, has a little bit of paint on there. I got the red for the uh, for the laser sight. So it's kind of cool. I mean, of all the weapons Hunk should have, you know, the uh, the minigun that that just <laughs> wouldn't uh, it wouldn't be Hunk without it. And you can actually pose it in there and put his finger on the trigger. Now, I have to actually put it his hand. I have to put it on the outside of his arm. And then twist this around because for some reason it just doesn't seem to want to uh, to go in right otherwise. But there you go. Hunk looking really good. And then his last accessory is the actual G-Virus. Which is actually kind of cool. A little vial with the G-Virus uh, contained inside it. And this one you can just kind of put in the other hand, like so. And if you would have enough uh, zombie figures, you know, you might actually be able to uh, to do a fairly nice display of Hunk. You know, the Four Survivor, the Soul Survivor, the Last Man Standing. You know, kind of surrounded by those zombies. Knowing that, yeah, <laughs> he's going to make it out. Not a bad figure. Actually, a really great figure for what it is. For the sake of posing, you know, I, I, don't, think, uh, I don't think I could be happier with him. But, uh, but I, I, would, I would really like to have seen them kind of, I'd like to see them go back and redo some of these characters. Hunk would definitely be one of the ones I would put on the list. I would definitely like to see Hunk on the list of uh, remastered figures with a new neck articulation, particularly around the elbows and the legs. Hope everybody enjoyed watching. Rate, comment, subscribe, join the revolution. We'll see you soon.